Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com and in this video we are going to look at how to use the get pivot data function of Excel. Now the get pivot data function is used to query and extract data from a pivot table. So it's kind of a pivot table lookup. That's what it is. Now this feature is turned on by default in Excel and that is because it can be extremely useful for what we need it to do. So take this simple pivot table I have at the moment and I'm going to use this function to extract the data that I want and we'll see some of the benefits of why you might want to use it. We're then going to see a second example of where it doesn't really help us and we want a standard reference instead and we'll look at how we can turn this feature off. Okay, let's look at the benefits of it to start with though. And if I just click in any cell of this spreadsheet and start a formula by typing equals and click on one of the cells of the pivot table. And immediately in that cell, they write the get pivot data function. And what this is telling me at the moment, the first part of the function tells me that it's extracting data from the total sales value field. So just to make sure we're happy, that is the name of the field with the numbers. You can see it mentioned in the top left, that is the name of that field. That is my values area, if you will. Now A3, that is a cell within the pivot table. Any cell it can be. Now that's the cell in the top left hand corner. And if you ever find yourself writing this yourself, you're encouraged to click on that one. Uh, because it's reliable and if the pivot table changes in height and width we know that cell will be part of it theoretically though it could be any of the cells in here it doesn't have to be a3 it then just chooses the fields to use it from so you see you've got field one item one field two item two i'm just reading from this box down here when i mentioned what i just mentioned so in the product category field it's got to be a grains and cereals product from the years field it's got to be the year of 2012 and from that extract the correlating value from total sales value and that's what it does it's very specific in what it wants but the benefit of that is so that you know a pivot table will generally change over time it's going to maybe get bigger maybe get smaller maybe people are going to sort this data by like the values or something and that's going to move the values around and these things will happen um, so by using a function like get pivot data it will always find you what you want it would always find the grains and cereals value from 2012 for example no matter where it is because it's a lookup now that's a very good thing about it a lot of the kind of haters of get pivot ta table data uh, get pivot data will say that because it's so specific it's so structured that is a negative so i've got an example here where to combat that in cell g4 i've got a little drop down list little data validation list of the different products and let's imagine that this is probably on a different sheet this this is a whole different report in a typical real world example it's on the same sheet here so that we can for learning purposes see what's going on but people want to be able to choose a product and then automatically return what the total is. And because I've got a pivot table, it makes sense to use that rather than interrogating the big list. So in here, if I was to go ahead and do that, if I type equals and I've got produce up there at the moment. So let's click on the grand total for produce. And it's going to write this in extract data from total sales value. A3 is a cell in the pivot product category field produce and that's what I want it to do if I press enter surprise surprise it's got it from that cell but that cell is not E11 no 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 it's not E11 that is the produce data the grand total of produce because get pivot data is involved and that's good but I want to be able to choose this drop down list above and choose confections or choose dairy and I want that to change and at the moment it's not so let me revisit my formula and where I've got produce on the end in these inverted commas, I'm going to select cell G4 and press enter. And now 
when I change that drop down list above to condiments or to produce or to seafood, you can see that value changing. So I've given my get pivot data a dynamic element by referring to that cell. And by doing things like that, you can make the most of that function. It can be a really helpful function for you in your kind of summary sheets, your reports, your dashboards, whatever you've got going on. If you've got pivot table data, it can help you extract the data that you want from it. But yet you can still keep a dynamic nature to it. It doesn't have to be that structured. Now that's an example of where it can be helpful. But let's click on sheet two here and have a good example where maybe it's not going to be so helpful for us. So same data, but a, a different pivot table. Got a filter for a country at the top, currently Switzerland in there. And I've got these values sorted largest to smallest. So even if I change it, so I've got dairy at the top, condiments at the bottom. If I change the filter for Argentina, slightly different here, confections at the top, grains at the bottom. All the data's moved around. It's actually a bit smaller as well. There's only seven categories. If I switch that back, notice uh, row 11's got the total in. If I switch that back to Switzerland, the total's in 12. So it's a completely different table now. So let's imagine for some reason, possibly on a different sheet, and that, that I want to return the value from the best product at any point in time in the pivot table. Now, there's no point in me at the moment using my get pivot data because that will put dairy products in. So if I was to type equals and click on that value, it writes my get pivot data function in. Get the dairy product category from total sales value. But I don't want dairy product. I want whatever the best one is. And because I've got that sort going on, that could be a different product. It depends what the country is. And it also depends what's doing well. It might still be Switzerland, but in a month's time, it's a different product doing well. So that doesn't really help me right now. So what I'm going to do instead is simply type it in. I'll put equals. I'll just type B4. And that will allow me to use a standard sheet reference instead of one of those get pivot data functions. It's not helpful for me right now. And if I press enter and I get my value, and then I filter my pivot to Argentina, for example, now I'm returning whatever the best selling product is. I've always got the best selling product, not dairy, which is not always gonna be dairy. And that's an example where it's helped me to avoid get pivot data. Now, if that is what you're gonna be using in the pivot table, if you don't think you're going to use get pivot data, and it is the standard, it is the default thing. So you've got to type in your references to kind of avoid it. If you click in there, it's going to use it. What I could do is I could click my Analyze tab under Pivot Table Tools at the top. It may say Options if you're in 2010 version of Excel. And on the far left, I've got an Options drop-down list. And in there, Generate Get Pivot Data. And it's ticked. If I turn it off, so click on it to toggle it off. Now when I use references and click inside that table, it uses a normal sheet reference. So if you don't think you're going to use that function, you can disable it. Or, or it's not completely disabled, but by default you can turn it off. That is, I guess, your choice. And it works for me in this example. But remember on a previous example, when I was talking about how specific it was from the years and from the categories, in the pivot table, it's going to change in height and stuff, change in width. These are different years. There'll be other years coming, or if these are days of the week, or even weeks, it's going to change more regularly. You may need that get pivot data to get the specific thing you're after. I hope you found this video useful. <coughs> Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel, and come check us out at computergargar.com. Dot com.